don't worry about being exactly precise. I'm going to go ahead and smooth the edges out a little bit. And now we're getting a pretty decent looking Aurora Borealis. This is the brightness that I was talking about. However, since we set it up on its own layer system, I can now control the brightness of this particular device by lowering its slider. So now we have the ability to change that up a little bit. Now you're probably wondering why I created this little hole in the atmosphere. Well, I'm going to explain to you right now why I did that. If I wanted to hide the original source. Now see the Aurora comes back here. This is its own layer. We don't need to worry about this. This is our mass channel. But however, right here, if I wanted to add a blur node, you can see that this area right here is very prominent and it has some Aurora in it. I want to remove some of that Aurora by blending it all together. Okay. Now again, I could go ahead and add a mask. This is sort of important. I could probably use this mask right here. I like to reuse things. Sure. So now it's a little bit blurred. And now, when I lay this on top, it doesn't look as prominent. So if I, let's go ahead and remove this. Let's go make this active. And I remove this, the detail comes back. Okay, so we don't really want the detail in there because we're adding our own new detail with the Aurora Borealis. So let's go ahead and bring that back into place. And let's take a look at our latest view. Now we can go ahead and play around with the mask a little bit. You can see that this mask has some potential to come down here. I don't want to get too close. Of course, I can soften the edges even more. I don't want to get too close to the uh, mountain peak because we're going to use the snow as a animation as well using the smoke deformer. Go ahead and smooth out any of our edges by hitting the sh shift S. And that's looking pretty interesting. I can even bring it into the trees a little bit to create that atmospheric effect that Aurora has. Now remember, it's not just in a distant sky, these items actually particles uh, in local sky and further away. So as you see them through the atmosphere, they tend to build up. So they're not just in one plane layer located in the distance. They're actually an accumulation of layers and static electricity that's going through space. So let's go ahead and use that as our effect right now. I might even bring this down a little bit to create that reverse halo effect that I was sort of interested in. This is not what was exactly inside of the shot. This is something a little bit different that I saw when I was in Rochester, uh, near Canada one time before. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. Now we can go ahead and add our Luna. Now as you might have expected, we want the Luna obviously to be behind this layer here. So now we're back to moving all of this forward and creating a Luna probably after the ultra here. So let's go ahead and grab that particular plugin from our bins directory. I'm going to drop it into place. And you can see that I'm going to have to go into its settings. Now the first setting you're going to notice is that the use sky color is on. Always check that off so you can see the composite that you're working with. But I'll have to go ahead and set the preset that I'm looking for. Now there's a bunch of different presets in here. I'll take you through some of them. Like for example, large crescent is exactly that, the large crescent, the golden moon, something you might see uh, in a werewolf movie. You got your full moon. Uh, this is something, of course, if you turn the sky color off, you could have in the very faded background here. I'm going to use the dark full which satisfied most of my requirements. I'm going to turn the sky color off and I'm going to bring this just over here and I'm going to increase the size of the moon itself and the outer rings. Okay, so you'll see this little dotted line item. This is the outer rings here that sort of make it, you know, worthwhile. Now what I'm going to do is create a mask over here to block out the mountain. I might even move this over here a little bit. Uh, so make it a little asymmetrical. And I'm going to change the angle of the phase. Now the sun's coming from this direction according to our shadow line. I'm going to change the phase as well, just ever so slightly, because there's hardly or very rarely a full moon in perfect shape. And if I deselect that, you can sort of see that's going to be okay. I'm going to now mask this out. So let's go ahead and take a look at this as the active view. I'm going to create a polygon mask. And while the polygon mask is active, I'm going to create a couple of shapes here. Let's go ahead and just block it out. I'm going to go fairly quickly 
so not to waste too much time but you're going to spend a little bit more time grabbing some of this detail now if you wanted to try to key this out a million times in order to get this uh, preserved tree shape feel free it can be done that way I'm going to take a little bit of a faster route here for tutorial purposes and I'm just gonna bring that down here if I need to add some more points I will just want to get enough to grab the outer edge here I'm not going to include the snow drift as a part of that edge that's going to be an accumulative light situation okay so now I have this mask that covers my main interest area of the moon and I'm going to either lock this into the moon alpha or I'm going to create yet a new layer now how I like to do this is I like to put everything on its own layer so I'm going to create a background and I'm going to disconnect this Luna and I'm going to have a little bit more control this way I'll drag the Luna into the background as you can see here I have exactly the same way and I'm going to create a merge down here now as a part of the flow and I'm just going to drop my Luna on top of that layer let's go ahead and lock that in of course it has to be on the layer not the mash channel there we go and we can go ahead and bring it to the screen multiplier and we can drag this into the mash channel and from the polygon we can invert it and now we can create the rest of the chain and see what we got so again normally you might want to smooth out the edge of a mask ever so slightly no matter what the situation is it's up to you in this case that's looking a little silly with that much of a mask on there but I can move the Luna a little bit as well I'm not too crazy about its location let's see what it looks like here alright and let's go ahead and remove some of that soft edge actually all of it for now oh, 0.01 will do the trick 